In this episode, I'm going to give you five tips to overcome the little goblins and gremlins that seek to destroy your epic hyperlapse. A time lapse is a series of photos taken over an extended period of time and then stitched together into a single video sequence. A hyperlapse is a time lapse taken while the camera is in motion. Each frame, each photo is taken from a slightly different location. The end result is a lot of information conveyed in a short amount of time. You see more angles on your subject, you see more of your subject surroundings, and you see more of what's happening around your subject. It's dense, it's intense, and it's awesome. Now, I'm not gonna give you a full tutorial, but for the sake of those who've never done a hyperlapse before, I'm gonna tell you briefly how it works. Basically, you point the camera at your subject, you take a shot, you move a little, you take a shot, you move a little, you take a shot, you move a little, and so on and so on and so on. Later, you use video editing software to put these photos together into an actual video sequence. Each photo is a frame of the video. That's it, that's how you make a hyperlapse. Until things start going wrong, that is. But let's see if we can avoid that. One of the biggest challenges you'll face while creating a hyperlapse is a flickering effect that's caused by a difference in exposures between photos. You might be used to shooting with some automatic settings. For example, a lot of people, myself included, often shoot on aperture priority mode. However, when you're doing a hyperlapse, the minor differences in lighting between the photos, when it's all stitched together, creates a really distracting flickering effect. So you really don't want your camera to help you out with this. You wanna pick your settings and then stick with them throughout the entire sequence. And that means shooting on manual mode. Just like you don't want to use auto exposure, you also don't want to use auto white balancing. As you move around, the colors in the frame are going to change, and that means the camera is going to interpret it differently for the purpose of white balancing. Each frame of your hyperlapse could have a slightly different white balance, which is going to look really weird when you stitch them all together. Instead of choosing auto white balance, you want to pick a white balance and then stick with it throughout the entire sequence. If you don't know what to choose, try daylight and see how that works. A lot of people, myself included, often shoot with their aperture wide open as a default setting. This looks fantastic when you're up close to your subject, if you're taking a portrait, for example. It blurs out the background, isolates the subject, and makes everything look awesome. In this shot, for example, I'm shooting with a very low aperture, and so you can see the background is all blurry. But that's only because I'm close to the camera. When the subject is further away, the blurry background thing isn't as much of a thing. You wind up with just slightly out of focus backgrounds or foregrounds, which makes everything look kind of muddy and weak. You're actually usually better off shooting with a more narrow aperture, something like f8 or f16, which is gonna bring more of the image into focus. This is particularly important at night where any points of light in your shot that are out of focus create those delightful bokeh balls that everyone loves. The problem is those bokeh balls get larger or smaller depending on exactly how you focus. In a single photo, it doesn't matter. When you're sequencing together hundreds of photos, it can make a huge difference. That pulsing can be really distracting. I've lost more hyperlapses than I care to admit to pulsing Pokeballs. Some cameras allow you to set auto ISO even when you're shooting manual, and that's basically just a different kind of auto exposure. No auto ISO. Pick an ISO setting, maybe it's 200, maybe it's 400, maybe it's 800, whatever works for the lighting of your scene, and stick with it throughout the entire sequence. The hardest part of shooting a hyperlapse is stabilization. Obviously, you can do some stabilization in software after the shoot, but the more you can do in camera, the better results you're gonna get. Obviously, lugging a tripod around with you is the ideal. That's gonna help you stabilize each shot the most. However, if you wanna shoot handheld, it's still doable. You just have to pay really close attention to how you're holding the camera and where exactly you're pointing it. If your camera has a level feature, you're definitely gonna wanna use that. You can also turn on the grid so that you can use that as a reference point for making sure each shot is pretty similar. And as much as possible, pick a high contrast point on your subject to focus on. That'll help you lock the focus tightly, it'll help make sure you're pointed at the right thing each time, and it's gonna help with stabilization in post-production. If you're into video stuff, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel because they're amazing. 